Thank you for joining us on today's episode of Tax Matters. Um, Chamaka Ohauchi. Last episode, we brought you the story of the X ray of the 2023 federal government budget organized by the CITN. We do recall that one distinct takeaway from the contributions of the paper presenter and the discussants is that. To ensure development, citizens must pay taxes, that infrastructures in whatever form can only arise from taxes paid by all and sundry. But then, when citizens pay taxes, they expect results, they expect infrastructures. On today's episode, we'll be looking at that value chain from tax payment to project delivery. So we'll begin with our tax law clinic. Today, we are looking at education tax. Education tax was introduced into the Nigerian tax space in 1993 through the Education Tax Act No. 7 of 1993. Initially, the Education Tax Act No. 7 of 1993 mandated the Education Tax Fund to operate as intervention fund for all levels of public education at federal, state and local government levels. The Federal Inland Revenue Service is empowered by the Education Tax Act to assess and collect education tax. Tertiary education tax is imposed on every Nigerian company at the rate of 2.5% of the assessable profit for each year of assessment. The tax is payable within two months of an assessment notice from the FIRS. In practice, however, Many companies pay the tax on a self-assessment basis along with their company's income tax. The Tertiary Education Trust Fund was originally established as the Education Tax Fund by Act No. 7 of 1993 as amended by Act No. 40 of 1998. It later became Education Trust Fund, which itself was in turn renamed Tertiary Education Trust Fund by the Amendment Act of 2011. The Education Tax Act No. 7 of 1993 had mandated the fund to operate as an intervention fund at all levels of public education, federal, state and local. This mandate was faithfully discharged between 1999 and May 2011 when the Education Tax Act was repealed and replaced by the Tertiary Education Trust Fund Act. That fund is an intervention agency set up to provide supplementary support to public tertiary institutions with the main objective of using funding alongside project management for the rehabilitation, restoration and consolidation of tertiary education in Nigeria. The fund is managed by an 11-member board with members drawn from the six geopolitical zones of the country, as well as representatives of the Federal Ministry of Education, Federal Ministry of Finance and the Federal Inland Revenue Service. Currently, the disbursement of the fund is 50% to universities, 25% to polytechnics and 25% to colleges of education with emphasis placed on science and technology due to the expensive nature of training within the country. Welcome once again. It is generally agreed that even as it is certain that citizens will pay taxes, it is all the same not that easy to get everybody to pay tax. And so, continually, tax authorities all over the world are on their toes with a view to ensuring that taxpayers do not slip through the crack, either through tax avoidance or tax evasion. There are various means through which this is done, but one of the major ones is tax audits. On Monday, the 6th of February 2023, the Apex Tax Authority in Nigeria, the Federal Inland Revenue Service, responsible for taxing corporate organizations, signed an MOU on joint tax operations and audit with Lagos State Internal Revenue Service, which is largely responsible, like other state internal revenue services, for administration of personal income tax. To underscore the importance attached to the event, it was hosted by the Executive Governor of Lagos State, Governor Babajide Sonwolu, at the State House Marina. Also present were the Minister of State for Finance, Budget and National Planning, Prince Clem Abba, the Executive Chairman FRS, Mr. Muhammad Nami, 
the executive chairman LRS, Mr. Ayodele Sober, and top cabinet members of the Lagos State Government. Also in attendance were the coordinating directors, group leads, and other top officials of the FRS and the LRS. Why the collaboration? Given the background that we all have to improve the quality of our fiscal space in the country, given the background that we know that an economy of this size, a population of this size, we can do a lot better. We continue to see a deep, even in a very not impressive GDP, tax to GDP ratio that we have as a country. Between six, seven, eight percent is totally unacceptable. If you talk of developed nations, they are doing between 35 to 40 percent. And that's what makes them developed countries. Because indeed, it's really an avenue for you to support your government and hold them accountable. Because that's how nations are developed. That's how cities and that's how territories are developed. And this collaboration is really not to overtax anybody. It's not overburdening. It's really just to widen you know, the, the base and for people just to do what is right and what is equitable. You know, so that the vulnerable in our society, the people that we need to take care of, we can have enough resources to take care of them. What it will mean is that your government can do a lot more for you. Your government can respond to all of your needs in health, in education, in public safety, in security, in urban regeneration, and everything that makes life meaningful for its citizens. The executive chairman of FRS, Mr. Mohammed Nami, spoke about the modus operandi of the joint tax audit and the collaboration in general. Uh, is expected to enable us to carry our joint audit together and also in the course of our investigation we work as a team. The third and most important thing is automatic exchange of information. With information we are able to get data, very big data for the purpose of tax administration. With this information, we are able to carry out tax administration seamlessly. With this information, we are also able to, to carry out the audit and investigation. On his own part, Executive Chairman LRS, Mr. Ayodele Sober, stressed the need for tax compliance among the citizenry. On the expected gains, reduction of compliance costs for taxpayers, improved transparency in the tax administration process, which will impact tax disputes incidences and reconciliation, reduced administration costs for post tax authorities, and elimination of hiding place for recalcitrant, taxable persons and entities. The MOU was signed by the FRS chairman and the LRS chairman under the watchful eyes of Governor Son Wulu and the Honorable Minister of State for Finance, Budget and National Planning. Later at a press conference, more light was shed on the MOU. Revenue to GDP currently is at 6%, and that's awful. The lowest in the world. We cannot be proud of that. Uh, the current National Development Plan's target is to grow it to 15%, at least by 2025. And what we have done today is a step in the right uh, direction. And like I did say a while ago, I am looking forward to other states joining in this good uh, initiative so that it will be better for all of us. My own would just be to appeal to Lagosians to trust government and to trust and to believe in the fact that civilization globally does not uh, usually happen by accident. It is the citizens of those jurisdictions, if you travel to the UK, the other, and other development, developed world, it is the citizens of those countries that have paid for the civilizations that we go to patronize on daily basis, the beautiful hospitals, the beautiful schools, the, the state of the art infrastructures that are there in those uh, jurisdictions are uh, made possible with the taxpayers' money. And to assure the questions that they should trust this government that with this government uh, and with additional funds in its kitty, a fourth mainland bridge is possible 
uh, Lekki International Airport is possible and other critical infrastructure that negotiations require from government will be made possible. For us to be able to do that, what and what are we supposed to do? We have to ensure that we have an automatic exchange of information. We have to do the joint audit. We have to block revenue leakages. So these are all things that were set out there to do to be able to now realize the goal of raising more funds for Lagos State and more funds for the entire country through this collaboration. We look forward to a very successful collaboration with the um, FRS. Uh, it's mainly around sharing of information, exchange of information. It's around the ability to fish out all the recalcitrant, especially high net worth individuals who take advantage of the uh, different, the fact that there's federal inland revenue service that um, regulates basically the limited liability companies, the corporate entities, while the subnationals, the IRSs, State Internal Revenue Services, generally regulate the tax laws around individuals. So we know the practice in Nigeria, a lot of the high net worth individuals make a lot of their personal expenditure through their corporate accounts. Now the states are not empowered to look into the affairs of corporate entities. We can only look into the affairs of individuals. Thereby, the states lose a lot of revenue. The road infrastructure tax credit scheme is one of the innovations uh, of this government in order to encourage investment in critical infrastructure. We have the one that NNPC is handling. Uh, there are 21 roads spread across the six geopolitical zones that are being handled. So this is a very uh, important scheme. It's leveraging on the um, capacity of the private sector to be more efficient in project delivery. And um, I am sure that by the time some of these routes become uh, operational, it is going to uh, improve the competitiveness of Nigeria's economy and in the end reduce our imports. Road Infrastructure Tax Credit Scheme, Order 007. That leads us to our next story. When taxes have been collected, to what use are they put? Infrastructures like roads, hospitals, railways, housing, security, name it. On Thursday, the 2nd of February, 2023, the Federal Minister of Works and Housing addressed a press conference on the implementation of Phase 2 of the NMPC Limited Funded Tax Credit Scheme intervention, covering 44 routes projects across the country. The Executive Chairman FRS and the Chief Financial Officer of the NMPC Limited were in attendance at the press conference. We recall that on Wednesday, 18th January 2023, the Federal Executive Council approved the request of the NMPC Limited to embark on phase two of its intervention scheme, which involves the rehabilitation of 44 routes spread across the six geopolitical zones across the country. The selected routes cover a total of 4,554.19 kilometers. Engineer Adedamola Kuti, Acting Director Highways Construction and Rehabilitation, gave a report on Phase 1 of the scheme with regard to NMPC Limited Area of Intervention and proceeded to speak about the Phase 2 being embarked upon. I'll just mention a few roads that have been captured in the Phase 2, the 1.969 billion and trillion. Um, the entire axis of local jail to Benin, the four sections on that road, have been captured on this particular um, phase two, and then the, also all the sections on the east-west road has also been captured in this phase. The section, the realization of the Zaria from to Gusto Sokoto Road, the entire sections there have been captured in the phase two, and then of course uh, the Apure dualization as well as additional money on the Lagos Padre also been captured under this phase two. Inclusive of uh, Nembe Brass, 
in Bayesua State. As it was done in phase one, phase two will be governed by a set of guidelines to be issued to each contractor. There will, there will also be a fund intervention agreement to be implemented in addition to the standard condition of contract governing the execution of the projects. Executive Chairman FRS Mr. Mohamed Nami, whose organization is pivotal to the infrastructure tax credit scheme and the matter at hand, began with an assurance that all organizations that have keyed into the scheme and have been approved to participate are equal to the task, especially with regard to availability of funds. I'm assuring you that they have existing and future tax liability based on the estimate received by the Federal and Direct that will be able to provide you enough funds as your payments are due and confirmed. Gains of phase one have been elaborated. Roles, some of the roles that he was speaking to were roles that were constructed over 40 years ago. And to God be the glory, through this executive order 007, they are now being fixed. I will continue to appeal to Nigerians and particularly the big taxpayers to continue to trust this order so that we continue to provide critical kind of infrastructure that our country so dearly in particular world infrastructure and proof taxes who are also able to secure our lives and um, property. Mr. Omar Ajilara, the Chief Financial Officer of NNPC Limited, represented the GMD. As you recall, we had uh, done phase one and uh, funding has been steady. Uh, we are now committed to a second phase of 1.93 years. We want some quality to be maintained in the cost of execution of the roads under phase two. And speed of execution is very important because the funds are available and therefore there's no reason to give an excuse as to why uh, the time schedule slated for each road cannot be achieved. Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Raji Fashola, once again sees the opportunity to explain the workings of the scheme. So my remarks here are going to be prefaced first with to remind you where we were almost eight years ago. Some of you here have shut down equipment. You were laying off staff. You were being old. Some of the first meetings I had with many of you when I was appointed minister was that they had paid you only 10% advance payment three years ago or two years before. So that was how well the construction industry was doing. Some of our roads had been franchised out to quote and unquote private sector to go and raise the money to finance roads, which is the work that government itself should be doing so that private business can go on. So but this government and this president has not only increased spending from 18 billion for roads in Nigeria, 18 billion. That was the 2015 budget. The 2016 budget was 260 billion. But it wasn't enough. And all the roads that were supposed to have been done by private sector, Lagos Ibadan was one of them, Second Niger Bridge was one of them, but where was the private sector going to raise hundreds of billions on its balance sheet to build roads that government should build? So this president, this government moved away from those uh, unrealistic private models and pursued other more practical ones. Sukuk, which were borrowed. So people are talking about debt, but they're not talking about the assets. Yes, there is debt and it's important to be concerned about the debt. I don't begrudge anybody for raising those concerns. They're legitimate concerns. But what are the debts buying? They are buying roads, bridges, airports and seaports. Assets that would last and sustain Nigeria's development for another 40, 50 years. NNPC and their affiliates sit here today proudly investing resources and tax receipts into infrastructure. A new model of partnership 
with private companies using order seven and say, give me my tax in advance. Because the companies are going to pay taxes anyway. But give it to me in advance and invest it in infrastructure. That model is why all of you are here. And it shows a clear difference between two different government policies. And it shows how they affect your businesses. But our director of construction has made a very, very important point about some of the roads. There are 44 roads. Many of them are roads already contracted, that there are not enough funding. And what this intervention has brought is to say, hey, let's take you all the way to the end. How much do you need to finish this road? We will provide it. So that funding is now in place on most of these roads. Um, and this is important because it means that whether we are here, Buhari is here, is going in another four or so months, there is sustainability to completion of these roads. And they have assured you that if you do Work to the quality agreed, to the specification agreed, the money is there. They are also offering to pay some advance payments where there is justification for it. There are other in interventions by other groups, the Dangote group, the uh, NLNG group in Bodo Boni, the MTN group have now taken over the uh, Enugu on its highway, GZ Industries are in Abia, and uh, where Bua have taken over Kano to Kongolam, and there are others coming like that. And this is benefit and value for the construction industry and the island industry. But I want to be here on record just to repeat some of the major rules for which we have received a lot of complaints. Uh, by members of the public. Some of them have said we've abandoned them, but I kept reassuring them that we didn't abandon them. We were working on a sustainable and final solution. And one of them is our courier to Adwekiti, and we received a lot of uh, complaints there. I'm sure the people who use that road now can now heave a sigh of relief that the funding for that road is now totally in place. What remains for us to do is to complete uh, some administrative and procurement work and we hope to attack that road from two ends using two contractors, one from the Akure end, one from the uh, Adwekiti end. Uh, Bini Auchi to Okene is also another road very, very critical to supply logistics. It is part of the A2 and a very, very critical artery. We are working on the major arteries of Nigeria now the A1 to A4 that go from all the four ports to the north, and the A5 to A9 that cross across east and west. So that is the place where we have had some problems, and I'm very proud to say now that we have covered essentially the major grid arterial routes of Nigeria. So when we solve this on the A1 to the A9, you will have substantially uh, very good motorability. Nembe Brass, of course, he has also mentioned a very important role. And the dualization, now we're working on uh, Zaria Funtua, but we are now taking it all the way to Sokoto, and we are going to dualize it. I see uh, also the East-West Road, which has been in the news for some time. It was badly devastated by the flooding. Um, so we've awarded it, but now this is the funding security that ensures that it will be built and it will be built to the specifications and designs, especially the place around the LMA port where we are introducing now a flyover to separate traffic uh, going in and out of the port and the industrial complex and those crossing. In closing, let me just say that this for me is the most defining legacy for the president and our government. Um, this is the impact of very innovative investment policy in infrastructure. This is what prepares Nigeria to really do business. 
locally and internationally, the infrastructure base on which business is done. Taxpayers' money in action. Surely it pays to pay your tax. By way of rounding off, we must remind our viewers that there are other participating business entities in the infrastructure tax credit scheme. The Dangote Group, the NLNG, the MTN Group, the Boa Group, the Transcorp Group, Access Bank, GZI Industries, Mainstream Energy, and so on. We thank you most sincerely for watching today's episode of the program. Let's do this again next week. Bye for now. <music>